here's what we do. Those who are here to know this drill, we'll set this up, the layup drill. Just one ball. All right, we'll use Mal, he's got the ball. We work on our steps. We can get this thing moving pretty quick. All right, so Mallory's gonna pass to Dre. Dre's getting what we call locked and loaded right here. Almost like a waiter right here so he can extend the snap. When he catches the ball, he's going right, left, off the backboard. Here we go. Right, left, good. Mallory got to rebound that one too. All right, Dre's got the next one. And you teach him to go quick. Teach him to move quickly. Stay there for that one too, Dre. Now pass, good, here we go. Stay Mark, stay Mark. Good, we're moving, we're moving. Right, left, okay, now we're gonna go left hand front of the rim. I think they need to know off the glass, they need to know front of the rim, okay? So now we're gonna go left, left, right, left hand, okay? And, and you know, the thing to look at is here, and I'm gonna say this, and I'm not picking on my players here, there's no reason an eighth grader, so I'll say seventh grader now, cannot finish, should not be able to finish with both hands. But you know how many players have that? Because at the young ages, we're, we're just saying, oh, it's okay, just shoot your right hand. That's what you're good at. We need to score. We need to win. Develop both of their hands. There's even sixth graders are getting cut from teams now because they have no left hand. You are not setting them up for success if you do not make them ambidextrous with their dribble and their layups. I'm just putting that out there, okay? We're going to keep moving. But we would do right hand backboard on the right side, left hand front of the rim. We'd come front of the rim. We'd go right hand, left hand. We'd come left side of the rim. We'd go right hand front of the rim, left hand off the glass. Okay? And you can, I mean, we, we do this, my varsity team, we do this for five minutes, and we probably put up at least, I don't know, 60 to 100 layups. How often, how often are you going to get that many layups? Quick. Okay? Um, layups, shooting. Pretty much the same drill. I got a rebounder. I got my passers on the wing. Make sure we get another ball, too. Okay, I got one person right here. I keep it simple. I know there's the beef technique. There's this, there's that. There's, uh, uh, uh. Kids got to keep it simple. One, it starts with your feet. Your feet are square. You're on the balls of your feet. And what we do is we kind of get them bouncing like this so they feel that, okay? And then it comes from your hips. Here's why. Well, where do you get your power from your shots? Let me tell me. No. Because here's why. Do you want just your legs working on your shot? Shots, one fluid body motion. One fluid, complete body motion. I don't want my legs going and then my arm going, do I? You ever see anyone shoot like that? Like a Sean Marion or something, right? All right, that's why he just dunks all the time, okay? Isn't that one fluid? It's, it's your hips, because these connect both. So if I go from here and I drive from the hips, now I'm sending the right amount of power and it's smooth and it's fluid, okay? I know legs isn't wrong. I mean, I don't I mean, I don't, this is my philosophy, I think you say hips. Because here's the other thing, you tell kids legs, and they do this. Now you're not making anything. You're not balanced, you have no power. So we sit in a chair, we go back here, okay? Locked and loaded again, my wrist is back, I'm right here. It's, it's right here where we call the power zone. Because if I drive from my hips, all my power is going to come from here. That's why boxers punch from there. That's why tiger, I mean golf players, swing from there, right? That's why baseball players, I mean everybody. Football, I, I, whatever, whatever, linemen, they hit from here, right? Okay, that's your power zone. So we put that ball in the power zone, we drive the hips up. Now this doesn't have to force and push. You got young kids who are gonna probably be playing at 10 feet rims, and they shouldn't be yet development wise, but that's the rules of the league. You gotta do what you gotta do. You better teach them their hips and let their follow through be soft. The other thing is this. You see that ball? Snap on the wrist, I'm gonna pass this to Juju. I'm not even gonna look, watch this. Pretty accurate, right? Especially if you're not even looking. All I did was snap my wrist. That is accurate. They want to force their, their uh, follow through to be accurate. This is a bad example. I guess it's the soldier in me. It's the infantry in me. And I try not to use this with kids. Think of something else that works. But I, you're grown. I think we can do this. If I have a gun and I pull the trigger, am I going to force that bullet to aim more? That's just stupid, right? Okay, so why, if I, why am I going to pull the trigger here and force it to aim more if it's already accurate? You gotta teach them to trust this follow through and go here. The other thing is their brain has to talk to their body. They have to be thinking about what they're doing. Perfect example is Victoria right there. Victoria struggled for the last few years with a good follow through. It's just not very consistent. And some of it is she wasn't thinking about what her body should be doing. The process instead of the outcome. Kids worry about the outcome of making the shot. They don't worry about the process of doing it right. We sat, what, 20 minutes. In a matter of 20 minutes, we went from not even being able to make two in a row to swishing 10 in a row from the elbow. 
And we just we didn't go further than that because we were developing. And it was all a matter of her starting to think about her body and go here. Now, what we like to do as coaches is your hips, your follow through, your this and your this. Teach them what it is and then play the game called what you notice. Because now they have to start thinking about their body. You play the game, what'd you notice? So that's what we did with Tori. Now, I used to say, Tori, you're foul. Tori, you're foul. Tori. It didn't change anything. And all of a sudden I said, you know what? Tori, what'd you notice? Well, I did push a little bit. Okay, well, shoot again. She didn't push as much. What'd you notice, Tori? Well, my feet. Okay, we'll fix it. And you just get them to fix it. They got to be responsible because they want to get mad and just want the ball to fall in. They got to start thinking about this. They stop worrying about their miss and they start shooting better. By the end, I wasn't even asking Tori. I said, I was just rebounding. Oh, I pushed on oh, my feet. I didn't have to say anything. She was in full control of her body. She was in full control of her shot. She was swishing 10 in a row. They gotta have control. So quick drill we use. This is just start up. You can start close. Rebounder, shooter, pass it. Passes the ball, we're shot ready, hips are already down. You teach your kids to be shot ready. He shoots, rebounds, and we just funnel through. Here we go. Quickly, let's go. Get shots up, get shots up, let's go. All right, we hold our follow through until it hits the rim. Kids will pull off and run off, that affects your shot. You hold your follow through. Here's the other thing. That also tells me what I notice. Because the kids follow through right now, when they're throwing and pushing the ball to try to get it up there, it's gonna be here, here, all over the place. So you're gonna help them notice what they want. Now, if we wanted to, you could adapt this to whatever your offense is. One thing we do, Brittany here is a great dribble penetrator, so she dribbles down the middle, we drive her into the paint, and this wing slides and we kick. We shoot shots like that because that's in our offense. Where did we start though? We started on the gun shooting machine, shooting short corner, just hit shot short corner. No dribbles. So build it into your offense. Now you're practicing your offense and you're working on skills. Okay? All right, thanks guys. Defense, let's go through this fast. Cause I know Tony's about to cut me off real quick here. Uh, defense starts with closeouts. Let's do the closeout drill, baseline. A proper closeout is this. Man, let me have you demonstrate this. Is you sprint to the ball, about two arm lengths away, you're chopping while you drop. You're chopping our feet. That way we're on the balls of our feet. Kids are going to stop and be flat-footed. They're going to get blown by. Okay? You want to hear the squeaks. Tell them you want to hear the squeaks. She's got two hands up. She breaks down into one. What we teach them is mirror the ball. They don't seem to understand that concept. So, especially if you have a girls team, they're really going to understand this. Ladies, I'm not trying to offend you. But you all have your own personal little mirror. Then when you need to do your makeup in the car or wherever it is. All right? Come on, ladies. Y'all don't have that? Okay. Sorry, sorry for bringing attention to <laughs> And guys, you've all seen it. So we tell them to pretend they have little mirrors in their hands and they want the reflection of the ball everywhere they go. Tips and deflections lead to interceptions. All kids want to steal off the triple threat. That's fouls and you get beat. But you get your hands up like that circled passing drill we did. Now you're getting tips and deflections or you're forcing bad passes. You get the steals you want. So she sprints, two arm lengths, right right here. Now here's the drill. We're going to go right into the drill. I take everybody has a ball. Make sure everybody has a ball. I take one dribble, she slides out to the corner. Now we're working on her slides, and we're working on forcing our angles to the corner. You want to keep the ball out of the middle, teach your defenders to have an angle that forces to the corner. Okay? Next one goes. He's going this way now. He's closing out hard, one dribble, he slides, slides, slide, we're there. We're coming here, one dribble, slide, 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 and we're out. Okay, the next progression. As the coach, I'm gonna take one dribble to either elbow. She has to cut in front of me and get this. I got this from the Silver Stars. So this is how simple this is, and I've used it with second graders. But well, the thing you gotta teach them is you're not always gonna have the fastest kids. You might never have the fastest kids in some cases. So that first step, they like to take a little step and they get beat, especially if they know how to clip the hip, okay? So we gotta get a big kick step on the first step, okay? We emphasize that on this. So now she throws it out, she closes out. I'm taking a big dribble, she's gotta cut it off and then she slides and finishes out the drill. And we're here, big step, big dribble, she slides it out and we're going on the next one. Now what we do is we throw a change of direction in there. So Tori closes out, one dribble cuts it off, I change directions, go here. Now coaches, I know some of you haven't practiced your dribbling in, we won't say how many years, we don't age anybody here. But keep it simple, just cross over. Teach them no steals, because they're gonna wanna slap and pull your ball, and especially if you feel good, they stole from the coach. Right? Well, teach them no steals, move your feet. If you have to, if they have a real bad problem with it, sometimes what we do is we put a jump rope in their hand or some string or something got to hold like this. And now they are forced to move their feet at all times. Or I don't like hands behind the back because now you're teaching them it's okay to have their hands down and it's never okay to have your hands down. Okay? Anytime we're in defense, we're in a stance, hands, and we have vision. 
every time, okay? Those are three things I stress every time, anything we're working on. All right, so again, we're here, one dribble, she cuts it off, change direction, cuts it off. Now, if I go like this, she has to come out, contest the shot. We can test up, not in, because then that's the, that's the foul. Does anyone see the game last night when Manu was over here? He got slapped and he somehow threw this thing in and they're, they're gonna do it. Maybe not the young ones, but you're gonna get foul calls. Straight up, young kids have a problem shooting over the top of this. They have a real hard problem shooting over the top. All right, thank you. All right, um, no balls, offensive, defense, offensive, defense, let's go. Denying, and this, everyone has to be man to man, right? Not in this league? No. Oh, okay. This, this is why MCA league then, right? Okay, I was thinking the Spurs. The Spurs league have to be all man to man. Well, let me say this. Don't play a zone just to win. Go teach your kids man to man. Do them a service. Because they'll get cut sixth grade if they don't know man to man. And, and you're not teaching them defense by teaching them zones. Teach them man to man. There's three simple things. All they need to know is on the ball. I just taught you that. All they need to know now is how to deny it. What they're gonna to wanna to do is they're gonna to wanna to hug this defender. But that's not good because they're responsible for him and for me on this drive. So we're gonna come one step off, one step down the line. We've got our inside foot, which is the foot closest to the ball up, and the arm there, go ahead and do the same. Okay, so now what we do is we just do this. I might drive, he's gotta come off, I pull out, he recovers. Okay, I drive here, she pulls out, come back, recovers. Another progression of it is this. Now he's gonna use that same pivot seal we used to get open, and they're gonna see who can get open, okay? So go ahead, let's see who can get open. I'll pass to whoever gets open first. Okay, good deal. That's all you're looking for. Don't teach your kids to go here and try to get the steal like Allen Iverson used to do. Allen Iverson was quicker than lightning. Of course he's gonna get that. Remember, tips and deflections lead to interceptions. Mark tips this ball, and it's going this way. Who has an advantage? Mark does, he's already facing this way. He goes in a full sprint, he has to turn and go get him, okay? So we'll progress through that. Help, the other thing is this. If the ball goes here, what we call weak side defender, we split this line in half, whoever side the ball is on strong side. All weak side defenders are on the help line. I, I, a lot of times I put a line of tape right here where we're teaching this. It's a good visual aid. You may not be able to do that in your gym. The floor tape's pretty cheap, you get it, you can peel it right back off, use it during practice. So now she's here, so maybe we'll just, you know, we do this. We're just swinging, she's recovering, he's the help line. They want to move when the ball's in the air, and they want to be in position once the ball is caught. Okay, well, have a lot of times they just get to that spot, and they catch out of position, gone. Okay, a good help drill we use is Jack go middle, mark it off. Dre's gonna drive, she's gonna commit to Dre, now stay out there. Now that's good basketball, what she's doing, but everybody does that, but for the sake of this drill, you gotta tell them they cannot leave until they catch the ball. So we drive, kicks, Okay, she recovers on the closeout. Dre gets out of the way, and they're playing it one on one. They're playing it one on one. So now you, I mean, help to close out to one on one. If you want to throw an offensive rebound in there, now you got boxing out, you got rebounding, you got scoring. I mean, I'll, I'll take out every bird in America with one pebble right here. All right. So that's a good one. Another one we do is Jacks on the help line. Different rules you can make for your wings, whatever you want to work on. She's in the help line, and I can pass to whoever I want to. And let's say right now, no matter what, you have to drive. We believe there's two different philosophies. You can force players to the baseline to keep them out of the middle, or you can force to the middle because there's more help. Whatever you believe in. I believe in this. Especially young kids, they're gonna have a hard time understanding that, and help defense is something you're gonna take a time, it's gonna take a while to develop. I would force some baseline and teach them to keep the ball in the middle, because the highest percentage shots are in the middle, you get the ball in the middle, everything goes bad for defense, right? So tell them to keep them out of the middle. So Jackie's job is to not let either of these two drive to the middle, but their first option is to try to get to the middle, okay? Whoever I go to is who she guards. So we're here. She closes out, drive, go, okay? That was good D, but she let it go to the middle, right? Now we'll switch it out. Juju, come play the middle. Jack, go wing, okay? You can go for that for a while. Now, every time we catch, they have to shoot. So Juju has to do a good job of closing out on the shot. Okay? Whatever you want to do, be creative. What do you need to work on? Be, be analytical of what your team does and decide, oh, well, you know, we didn't close out on the shot line. We didn't take away the drive line. Use whatever you're going to use. A minute and a half, you can get a lot of reps. Keep this thing flowing. I'd put a line right here, and they just go from here to here to here. Here to here to here. All right? 